It's Monday, June 19th here at the West End Gun Club. Today's a federal holiday, so I'm out here at the range. To get some trigger time in, I wanted to come out last week. I had the day off last Wednesday. However, some vehicle issues with the Jeep caused me to not come out. I could have drove my, driven my Tacoma and should have made it through the creek. But then when I woke up on Wednesday, I was like, uh, feeling kind of lazy and a little hesitant. So I just didn't come out. So right here today. Brought out the recently built, again, the Defiance Anti Action for my lightweight precision build with this 22 inch 65 Creedmoor barrel proof research carbon fiber wrap. Then the MDT HNT 26 chassis. Last range log with the first rounds I put through this gun, I was just getting some velocity um, data with factory loads and some of my hand loads that I've shot before in my other 65 Creedmoor, which is the Savage with the Schillen barrel. So I got 45 rounds in the pipe, and so we're gonna go ahead and just get a little bit more velocity data and then try out some more hand loads uh, with some other powder. So I did bring out Federal Premium, which I've shot before, 130 grain, the Burger ammunition with the 144 grain long range hybrid target, and then this new ammo that I acquired, which is a hunting load, this is the Vortex LR, or sorry, Barnes Vortex LR. This is their LRX bullet. It's a hunting round, it's a monolithic bullet. I just wanted to see what the, what the factory ammo is shooting like in this gun because I did buy actual bullets, so I can make a hunting load using this bullet if I wanted to. So we'll get some velocity data with the factory ammo to get an idea of where I want to be with my personal hand loads in terms of velocities. Then I also made some more hand loads with H40-50 with the Burger uh, 144 long range hybrid target. So I got long range hybrid target 144s with H40-50 and then with the newer, newer powder, which is Stayball 6.5, which I've never shot before, and I bought specifically because I have this gun built. So let's go ahead and we'll start shooting. We'll get the barrel warmed up a little bit and we'll see how it goes.
So a few things going on this morning. Uh, the groups are pretty garbage as far as I'm concerned, and I'll show those to you in a moment. However, I've been having a parallax issue with this scope, although it's I don't think it's enough to factor into the, the group size. But I am having some issues, so I'm just trying to get proper cheek weld or consistent cheek weld every time, and I'm just not feeling it this morning. But the bigger issue is the Arca dovetail on the forehand. So if you saw in my last range vlog, the bipod was slipping under recoil and eventually it, it was moving forward and it pushed my Magadillo speed off of the rail. It's because the with the Arca clamp, because I'm using really right stuff clamps, and these are lever release clamps and it's to the really right stuff spec, it's a little loose on the rail. And I emailed, or I, I filed a, a little report or you know question with MDT and I asked them, hey, is anyone else having this issue? And they said no, but um, they said they would send me a new forehand to try it out, see if, it, if it's going to be any different. I ordered the MDT Arca rail for M-Lock. And I had that on here, but then I said I didn't like the way it fit because it didn't fit great because of how they, they, they structured this, the, the M-Lock on this. I think it's 4.5 slots. So it's like four full slots and then... It skips, a, it's, then it's a half slot, but it kind of skips the midsection of the first section and goes to the last part. So it's 4.5 because they decided to put that, that 10 30 second pitch, you know, thread pitch for the sling swivel stud, which, you know, it is what it is. But their 8.6 inch MDT Arca rail for M-Lock doesn't really fit on there. Flush or exactly. You can get, you get it on there, it looks kind of weird. Um, but, you know, I put it on there and said, you know, let me try the really right stuff one because it's kind of a universal. And it allows me a little bit more leeway on where I position it. But if you notice here, there, you know, I can put the kind of screws wherever I want in the M-lock positions. <clears throat> but it was actually slipping this morning, too, because I noticed that this rail was moving forward because my bipod was clamped very tight to this rail. And then I put... You know, these on the M-lock, and it was sliding on the M-lock. And I torqued it down a little bit more. I only had it 15 inch-pounds on the screws. So I put 25 inch-pounds on my like, last group. And I think that might have helped with the group. Because I think this whole time it was slipping as I was shooting and causing the groups to sort of widen up. And that was causing a lot of my up and down variations. So I think that factored into it. So my biggest concern here right now is... I don't think the Arca rail on the dovetail is good. And if I'm going to put an, an add-on Arca rail on the M-Lock, I need to go probably back to the MDT because the MDT one has kind of on the, on the, on the, the, the mating surface, there are like lips to, to kind of squeeze between the edges of the M-Lock slots. So that acts as a, acts as a, fun, as a anti-slip function. The R really right stuff doesn't have one. It's kind of it, they call it a universal, so it's 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 flat, completely flat. Whereas the MDT one, it's got a little couple ridges to kind of go on the to mate with the M lock slots. So I may go back to that one just to mitigate the fact that this will slide, uh, assuming your clamped accessory is tight, and then that recoil could affect that. So that might have been factoring into my groups this morning, and then third. 100%, there was some sort of um, lock time problem with my primers. I'm using Wolf match, or sorry, Wolf Magnum primers, small rifle Magnum primers. Never had problems with them before, but this morning when I was shooting, I legit heard click, boom, right? You sh I don't usually hear that gap when the firing pin falls and then it lights up. Like there was like a good, I would almost say a quarter second. That's how perceptible it was. And it happened a few times. So what that means is during that time, you know, it's possible that when I clicked, maybe I moved a little bit and it, you know, when I dropped the trigger and it clicked and I moved a little bit, it may have affected the groups. But that was very concerning. And it wasn't the stave ball powder. It happened with both the lows with H4350 and with stave ball. So I'm not entirely sure. I was using, these primers are pretty old. I think I bought them in 08, 2008, but I might have had this box or this little tray of primers out somewhere and maybe it got contaminated. Who knows? 
but I am slightly concerned. So I will switch to CCI BR4s, which I would I usually use, but I've been trying to use up all of these Wolf Magnum primers. But it was very disconcerting when I legit pulled the trigger and I heard that, you know, I heard the firing pin fall and then, then a little bit of a gap before it lights up. Normally, I don't hear that, right? It should, it's so fast that when you pull the trigger, fire and pause, it bangs, right? So definitely some weird issue with those primers. Um, I don't think they're too hard. Um, yeah, I don't know, but it was a weird issue. And it didn't happen with any of my factory loads. So I'm definitely thinking it's, a, it's the, the, the Wolf small rifle magnum primers. In any case, we'll, let's show the groups so just to be transparent on how bad it's shooting this morning. In any case, we started this morning with the 130 grain burgers. These are factory loads from Federal. These are the first two rounds and then the next three, which is pretty good. Um, this is a, keep in mind, this is clean cold bore, clean bore. I cleaned it before I came out here. And these are the first next two shots, which is really good. You know, I'm looking at that, it's great. I made a scope adjustment, like half a mil down. And what happened is I fired another five rounds with the same ammo and I shot these three and then for some reason, I, that's great. And then out of nowhere, it just dropped. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? So this is why I think the bipod and what, or the rail was moving with the bipod. Um, but I didn't really notice it until after the fact. So then I shot some factory 144s. These are actually the burger factory ammo. First two rounds and then the next three. And then I shot another five of the factory and this is a uh, five rounds. This is one, two, three, four, five. So you can see it is highly likely that the gun is moving under recoil as far as the, the bipod. So I shot some hand loads with the 144 grain burger long range hybrid targets. This is H4350. H4, First round and then four rounds here. And then another was this 41.8 grains. 41.8 grains fired another five, which is fine. Then 42 grains fired five and it opened up. So we're well over an inch here. This other target that I have here is with the Stayball 6.5 and then one factory load. So this is with the 144 grain Burger Long Range Hybrid targets. 44.2 grains of Stayball, 44.5, and I should have wrote 44.8 there, but forgive my, my notes here. A lot of up and down stringing with the 44.3, a lot of windage dispersion or left to right stringing with 44.5, and then 44.8, it kind of same thing, but then I threw this one down here. It was after this point, which I took a look at the rail and I was like, wow, it, it, it is definitely moving under recoil um, on the on the M-Lock forend. So I went ahead and tightened it up and then I shot one five round group with this Barnes factory Vortex LR ammo. This is 127 grain, their monolithic bullet. And I shot a really nice group here, four rounds plus one. These were the first four. And then I was, I was looking at the group and I was like, oh man, I gotta make this fish shot you know, really good. And then I pulled it. I 100%, I pulled in my, my shooting elbow, kind of trying to milk that shot. So it is what it is, but I'm relatively confident that the bipod or the, the whole rail sliding on the M-Lock 4N was definitely factoring into a lot of this uh, stringing because he saw it here. And then um, move my other target here and then we'll adjust the, adjust the, uh, camera here and then we have this up and down string here so I don't know wish I spotted it sooner but I did get some valid data today in terms of at least velocities and and whatnot and the SDs so my hand loads with with the H4350 and the 144s were not that great because I think with 42 grains it went up to 17 SDs but the 41.8 was a nice 5.6 SD. So not sure why that much, only a two tenths of a difference resulted in the poor SDs, but it did. Stayball on the other hand, um, eight SD and then 16 SD roughly when you go up to 44.5 and 44.8. So I think 44 point, no, so 44.5 was an eight SD. So. I don't know. We got some de some decent data there, so I think I know where I need to be, but not entirely sure where we're going to go with as far as getting his gun locked down and tightened up. So we'll work on that. Uh, let's go ahead and pack it up. I'm going to head over to the rimfire range for a little bit to test some targets.
came out to the rimfire range after the main line because I wanted to try out these target stands and deliver these KOL targets to the container. At our last match, the KOL broke one of the, I think it was the half inch, half inch target broke. It was, it's the Atlas Target Works KOL, which I've been using for a long time because I like those over the JC Steel targets because JC Steel uses a very thin KOL target and the Atlas Target Works is thicker. I think it's three eighths. 3 8 inch? I don't know. But it's a one-piece design, the one that I bought originally. And it broke where the stem met the hanger. It broke off during the match. We had a replacement. We replaced it during the match, and we you know, finished the match with the replacement. However, I just reached out to Alice Target Works because the person who had their own KOL with them also had Atlas Target Works, and he, we brought his out to, to use during the match. But when he said they were Atlas Target Works, and I looked at him, and I said, hey, how come yours is different than mine? It's a two-piece design. And so I reached out to Atlas Target Works after I got home from the match, and I said, hey, um, just to let you know, my KOL broke during the match. But however, I was curious when you changed the design, and he asked me a little, you know, um, I think his name is Brad, if I got his name correct. But he asked me, hey, so um, how did it break? You know, you know, wh where in the point did it break? And he said, oh, yeah, that's kind of a known issue in that one. And so that's why they redesigned it. So this one is a two-piece design now, so it's kind of just one hanger and then the KYL. I am a little curious though how well this functions because if it, I know kinetic energy will keep it on target, but if it decides to flip and it shoots slow, it could fall off, maybe. Maybe it'll fall out, but I don't know. Anyway, I think this is a better, this is probably a better design from a longevity standpoint, but um, Atlas Target Works gave, replaced these for free. So he sent me, well, the price was for free, which is great. He sent me not just the one that broke, but just the the original, the the four that we normally use for NRL 22 short course, the 100 yard. So was, he gave me the quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. So thanks to Atlas Target Works. However, I also did order, I put in a fresh order for Target bases. He's had these for a while, and I decided to get these because I needed something to get the, the targets off the ground higher. So you can see my stands, I'm using the JC Steel tans, stands on some wood bases that I made. And so they barely sit off the ground, maybe a foot and a half off the ground. However, Atlas Target Works has these kind of leg bases where it's a three-piece design. Uh, you have the standard base where you hang, you hang the target on and you can stake that into the ground. He has a stake base for it. Or you can run this sort of leg base. And this is designed so it does get it off the ground a little bit, right? Which is better than my existing ones, which I didn't bother to bring one out here to show you, but um, let me go grab one real quick. This is the wood base we use, two by four with a four by four, and then this is the standard JC Steel Target hanger. You can see it sits off the ground, I don't know, foot and a half. This one sits off the ground a little bit higher, so this is good. However, um, with these, it's you can put, three quarter inch conduit and I just have this three quarter inch PVC uh, laying around the house. And what you can do is cut them the length or whatever to get the targets higher off the ground. So you can see here, definitely sits higher. So if I need to, these are, I think I cut these to 18 inch, but I mean, if I need to get, you know, two footers, three footers, four footers and get away off the ground, but this is good enough. So in their situations, which I know I'll need one for the next course of fire or the next match, which is next Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, rather, we need to get it off the ground because the, it's we're shooting an upper angle and the berm blocks it when you're like in the prone position. So the berm, you can barely see the target. So this will help us out here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a quick look through um, from position where we're gonna have this, this target set up and then see how it, how it looks. As far as visibility, this space is great. So when we're shooting from a prone position out there, and then you have this berm or a berm in front of the target, and the, if the target's too low, you can't see it, but this is high enough off of the ground so we have enough clearance for the berm. So we're good there. However, one, two things rather. So for one, the target did come off while shooting. 
And so it still can bounce off and, and, and jump out. Atlas Target Works designed this so that you can put a 3 8 inch bolt in a lock washer, or sorry, a lock nut, and then that'll just keep it in place so this doesn't have a tendency to jump out. So I'll get some of those out of my garage and we'll use those for the next match. Uh, the other item here is that it does have a tendency to, to bounce. Uh, PVC is light. If I use conduit, you know, metal conduit, it should be fine. But even then, I still think it'll have a tendency to bounce because you've put the so much fulcrum here. You got the target so high up that it's still going to bounce like this. So what I may end up doing is use, utilize PVC, get a PVC end cap where I can put a weight on there of some sort. Um, then we should be good to go. But I think we're good here. I'm just going to make sure that I at least have that 3 8 washer or 3 8 uh, bolt with a lock nut. And then uh, we'll figure out a weight system so that it doesn't have a tendency to keep keep jumping back and forth. And maybe it'll start to shift. But I really like this base. Pretty much done with the rain session. About to pack it all up. Do a little bit of maintenance in the contents container and then head out. This morning, we did a little bit of testing with the lightweight precision build. And testing the new target base that I got from Atlas Target Works that we'll need for the upcoming match this upcoming Sunday. As far as what took place this morning on testing, not all that great results on paper. However, I'm not hitting the panic button just yet. I know where, I'm pretty sure I know that the Arca rail is the biggest issue right now on this gun. The forend Arca dovetail is not tight. We know that slides based on the last range vlog. Reached it out to MDT and they said they'll replace the forend to see if it fixes the issue. However, I'm not going to be too confident in that because unless they recheck their specs, it won't be suitable with ARCA clamps, like the really red stuff, lever clamps, Re lever release clamps. It will work knob clamps. So in order to address this issue, I tried to put my own M-Lock attached ARCA rail. However, this one slides because it doesn't have anti-slide like notches. So I'll go back to the MDT. I really like the really red stuff because it's a full length uh, versus the MDT, which is could have been full length. However, they didn't. They drilled something off on the uh, when they did the four and a half M lock slots on the forehand, and I kind of want to reach out to them and tell them, hey, if you they had drilled the sling swivel stud a little bit more forward, it would have worked out great with their 8.6 M lock Arca rail. So I'll send them a photo of that. So I might go back to that one though because it does have anti-slip notches, so it won't move in the you know when it's locked in the M lock because there will be those notches that prevent it from sliding. So I'll probably go back to that one um, just to be sure. I did torque this one down, though, to 25 inch-pounds on all four bolts. And maybe that'll be enough, but I'm pretty confident that we need to figure out the ARCA situation. Or what I could do is go to a knob clamp, which I'd rather not do. Um, knob clamps are better because you can adjust the tension, whereas lever clamps are their fixed tension for the most part. So with the knob clamp, it doesn't matter what spec the dovetail is, you can just tighten the knob down and you're good. So I may go to that on the bipod and that should fix my problem there without having to address it via the actual dovetail. As far as the loads are concerned, um, I have some data. I didn't really talk about the load data. Um, the SDs were a little bit wide on some of them, the, you know, more than I expected, but we'll work that out. Stable, I'm going to try to re I'm going to retry stable again given what happened today and it's possible that the primers may be bad because I'm getting those weird lag time on ignition. So I'm going to switch to CCI BR4s and we'll see how that goes. And then we'll come back out again and try this one more time. But again, I'm not hitting the panic button. I think I know where the, where the issues lie. I mean, that last 5 round group I shot with the factory barns shot great other than the fifth round i threw it a little bit to the right but i have confidence that this gun will shoot i just need to work out all the little bugs anyway next match nrl 22 is this upcoming sunday uh the road conditions just for everyone uh who's interested in coming out it's it's a a little bit worse than last month i only say that because the water is not all that deep it's the condition of the creek. It's all rocks, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's rocky. 
So unless you have decent tires and or high clearance and maybe four wheel drive, you should, you might have issues. Like if you drive it with like a low clearance SUV, like a crossover, it could get stuck in a certain spot. My only advice here is turn off your, your traction control because that will be the death of you on those situations. If you don't have four wheel drive and you're only two wheel drive only and on those slippery rocks on that creek bed, turn off traction control. That'll, that'll, that should get you through that ver, through, it should get you through it without having any issues. Anyway, starting to get a little noisy on this side because a lot of people are here at the range on Monday on the holiday. So that's it for today, June 19th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.